Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and review show. This time we're taking a look at the all new Range Rover Sport. It's certainly a looker, but is it worthy of the Range Rover badge? We also have Chevrolet's new supercar baiting Corvette Z06 and a posh new saloon car from Lexus. We also have BMW's new updated 3 Series and Volkswagen's stylish new Tygo. Up first though, the news. Volkswagen is celebrating 20 years of R Performance cars with a new special edition Golf. Since the original V6 powered Golf R32 was launched in 2002, the R badge has adorned various fast VWs as a step above the GTI. This new Golf R 20 Years Edition gets an extra 13 brake horsepower to bring the overall figure to 328, but the mechanicals are otherwise unchanged. It does get some special features though, including some carbon fibre interior trim and an emotion start system that flares the revs to 2,500 RPM on startup. We're still waiting for full performance details from VW, but this will no doubt be a must-have for Volkswagen R enthusiasts. The BMW 3 Series is the brand's best-selling car, and for good reason. It looks good, drives superbly, and is competitively priced and equipped compared with rivals from Audi and Mercedes. And now the 3 Series has been updated with more kit and some updated styling. Starting with the exterior, the changes are far from radical. It gets some new slimmer headlights which make the kidney grills look bigger, while M Sport models get a bigger lower intake. At the back there's a redesigned bumper complemented by a new diffuser, but otherwise the car is largely unchanged. Step inside and the changes are more apparent. There's a big new infotainment screen which BMW calls the curved display interface. It combines the 15-inch infotainment screen with a 12.3-inch digital instrument display, giving the impression of one big screen. Like other BMWs on offer, the system can be controlled either by the rotary iDrive control on the center console or via touchscreen. Physical buttons for the climate control have been binned, with temperature now controlled via the screen. Meanwhile, the gear selector lever has been replaced by a smaller toggle switch. Under the bonnet, the range of engines has been updated, but the cheapest way into a 3 Series is still the 320i Sport Saloon, starting at just under £38,000. For that, you get a 2-litre 4-pot, sending 181 brake horsepower to the rear wheels via an 8-speed auto. Next up is the 330i, now another 2-litre 4-cylinder rather than a straight 6. This time the motor produces a healthy 254 brake horsepower, allowing for a sub 6 second 0-62 sprint. The diesel 320D now gets mild hybrid assistance and is available with all-wheel drive, while sadly the 3-litre 330D has been dropped from the lineup in the UK. The plug-in hybrid 330e is still on offer and so are the range-topping M340 models. The petrol version sits below the M3 with 369 horsepower, while the straight-six diesel version will likely be all the car you'd ever need with mild hybrid assistance and over 500 foot-pounds of torque. An updated M3 will be coming later in the year, as well as the long-awaited M3 Touring.
Coupe SUVs, it seems, are all the rage. And while premium brands have been setting the trend for a while now, we're slowly starting to see the sloped roof design trickle down the automotive food chain with cars like the Renault Arcana and now this, the all-new Volkswagen Tiggo. Based on one of VW's South American models, the Tiggo is the smallest and cheapest way into coupe SUV ownership, with a starting price of just over £23,000. It makes use of VW's MQB A0 platform, which underpins the Polo, T-Rock and T-Cross, the Tiggo's more conventional sibling. As a result, it gets a familiar selection of engines, ranging from a 94 brake horsepower 1 litre 3 pot to a 148 brake horsepower 1.5 motor that'll power the little Tygo from 0 to 62 miles per hour in 8.3 seconds. The main draw, though, for buyers with any coupe SUV is the styling. Unfortunately, however, it seems that VW didn't get that memo. It looks much more like a tall hatchback than a coupe and less funky than the cheaper, more practical T-Cross. Speaking of practicality, it does get a decent 438-litre boot, not too much smaller than the T-Crosses. The sloping roof line is likely to reduce headroom for those in the rear, but this is a common problem with coupe SUVs that doesn't seem to put off too many buyers. All models come loaded with tech, including semi-autonomous adaptive cruise control, fatigue detection, a multi-function camera, and an 8-inch digital cockpit, although you can get a bigger 10-inch version on the R-Line. The rest of the interior is very similar to VW's other crossovers, while high-spec cars get a bigger 10.25-inch infotainment screen. Currently, there aren't really any direct rivals to the Tygo, but there are plenty of stylish small SUVs that make do without the coupe roofline, namely this, the Ford Puma. Eye-catching and great to drive, the Tygo will do well to win buyers away from Ford's smash hit crossover. All models are loaded with kit and terrific to drive, although it can feel a little cramped for taller passengers. And then there's this, the Mazda CX-30. Our favourite crossover thanks to its blend of high quality interior, relaxed driving style and affordability. It looks superb too, with plenty of influence from the three hatchback. But it's inside the cabin where you will really notice the designer's hard work. Under the bonnet there is just one engine option, a bigger 2.0-litre motor available with either 120 or 178 brake horsepower. Mazda is hoping to prove that internal combustion still has a future with the Sky Active. In theory, it's engineered to combine petrol performance with diesel economy. In reality, while it is frugal, performance still seems to be somewhat lacking. The Tygo then may bring a desirable body style to a more affordable part of the market, but it seems there are still plenty of competitors for it to beat. It's been a couple of years now since we first saw the new C8 Corvette Stingray, and it seems the new mid-engined layout has gone down a storm. The waiting lists are full, while cars that find themselves on the used market are selling above MSRP. And now demand is about to get even higher with this, the new Chevrolet Corvette Z06. A lightened, stiffened version designed to be more at home on the track. Behind the seat sits the world's most powerful, naturally aspirated V8, directly derived from the IMSA race car. It's a very modern power plant. Gone are the days of pushrods for the Corvette. 
It gets double overhead cams, a flat plane crank, forged pistons and titanium conrods, allowing it to rev all the way up to 8,600 RPM. Power, 670 bhp. Of course, to handle the extra power, the Z06 gets some chassis and aero tweaks, with new wheels and tyres, brakes and suspension. Increased downforce comes courtesy of a new rear wing and a wider front splitter with canards. The performance is incredible. 0-60 takes just 2.6 seconds. That's EV hypercar or Bugatti territory. Top speed hasn't been revealed, but we'd expect it to be somewhere around the 200 mark. However, the Corvette has always had a big rear engine problem, the Porsche 911. But with this latest Z06, is the best America has to offer finally a match for the equivalent Porsche, the GT3. Well, for starters, the German performance stalwart is down on power versus the VET. It makes do with 503 bhp, although it is lighter, achieving 62 from rest in 3.4 seconds. However, it's a proven weapon around a circuit, and it's very customizable. Best of all, you can choose to have your GT3 with a proper manual gearbox, a very rare treat indeed these days. But there's no denying the appeal of the Corvette. Sub three seconds to 60 and a big naturally aspirated V8 are guaranteed to raise more than a few smiles. After the break, the all-new Range Rover Sport. Coming up, the 2023 Range Rover Sport, but first... When choosing a new executive saloon, it can be all too easy to head straight down to your local Audi, BMW or Mercedes dealer and pick one of their very impressive, if slightly obvious, big imposing cars. However, might you be better off looking at options outside of Germany's Big Three? This is the newly revised Lexus ES, Japan's answer to the E-Class and 5 Series. Fresh from a midlife overhaul, the somewhat left field choice doesn't look all that different than before, with just a new grille and narrower headlights marking it out. There are some new alloy wheel options too, but otherwise the ES is unchanged aesthetically. Instead, the engineers concentrated on the chassis to make the new ES more comfortable and better to drive. It gets some updated suspension, which Lexus says has made the car more predictable, especially at high speed. The ES was always a relaxing car to drive, but Lexus has tried to refine it even further with incredible attention to detail. For example, the electronic braking system has been recalibrated and the brake pedal itself is now slightly bigger with more bracing around its mount to reduce vibrations to your foot. The door mirrors on the top spec Takumi cars have been replaced with cameras as we've seen on numerous EVs. Sadly, the integration here isn't the slickest, with the pictures being fed to a pair of rather incongruous screens mounted on the A-pillars. High spec cars also get the new LED headlights with blade scan adaptive high beam technology. This uses fast rotating mirrors to focus the light beams and increase your field of vision when your lights are dipped. Onto the bonnet, the ES retains its sole powertrain option, 
a two and a half litre four cylinder petrol motor hooked up to an electric motor and battery pack for a combined 215 brake horsepower. Sadly then, it lacks the broad range of engine choices you get in its German rivals, and it's also somewhat lacking in performance. 0-62 takes a casual 8.9 seconds onto a very modest top speed of 112 miles per hour. It is economical though, returning up to 54 miles per gallon. However, those looking for a non-German XX saloon aren't limited to the Lexus. This is the Jaguar XF, possibly the best looking car in this class. Available with a selection of petrol and diesel motors and as a saloon or an estate, the XF is more in line with BMW and Mercedes. It also gets a beautiful cabin with JLR's excellent PIVI Pro infotainment system. And then there's this, the Volvo S90. It's been around for a while now, but it still looks as classy as ever. The minimalist interior is a joy, even if some of the tech is getting on a bit. However, now available only as a plug-in hybrid, you should expect to pay a lot more money for the Volvo than the equivalent ES or XF. The Lexus then will continue to be rather a niche option. The Jaguar and the Germans will make more sense to most buyers, but as it always has done, it will no doubt continue to appeal to those in the know. Ever since its introduction in 2005, the Range Rover Sport has been a mainstay in the mid-size premium SUV class. A symbol of success, the British take on a German-dominated class has always attracted a younger class of buyer than the traditional full-size Range Rover. Now, in its third iteration, JLR's latest offering will have a lot to live up to after an especially successful previous generation. In that essence, the 2023 Range Rover Sports design is mostly a case of if it isn't broken, don't fix it, as a new car shares many styling cues with its predecessor. On the inside, it's the same story, with an elegant look bringing the Range Rover Sport into the new age of motoring, with large touchscreens replacing many of the physical buttons. The grandiose feel carries on throughout the cabin, with optional massage seats with ventilation and endless adjustability. Naturally, there are plenty of engine options and trim levels to choose from. The entry-level SE models make do with a 3-litre turbocharged inline-six engine coupled to a 48-volt hybrid system, putting out 355 horsepower. That figure is pumped up to 395 in the sportier SE Dynamic Spec. The same six-cylinder engine is coupled to an electric motor to make the P440E plug-in hybrid model, while the lineup is topped by the fiery P530 First Edition, the only current option running the twin-turbocharged 4.4-litre V8. With an eight-speed automatic box and four-wheel drive, the V8's 523 horsepower will send it to 60 miles per hour in under four and a half seconds. As one would expect from a heavy SUV with large capacity engines, the Range Rover Sport is far from the most fuel-efficient vehicle on the market, hitting a claimed 25 miles per gallon in V8 guise. Thankfully, electrified options will improve that, as well as decrease your road tax bill. Following in the previous Range Rover Sport's opulent footsteps, the new model starts at the considerable price of a smidge over £79,000. Although it remains firmly in its place in the Range Rover lineup, that figure makes it a lot more expensive than the majority of its rivals in this class. 
Up against the Audi Q8, one of three offerings in the class from the German brands, the Range Rover seems far from a bargain. The Audi starts at £69,000, and for that you get an awful lot of car. It's a big old thing with a 3-litre V6 and plenty of modern-looking tech. Audi's infotainment is up there with the very best, but next to the ultra-stylish Range Rover, the Q8 does look a little plain. What it lacks in style, though, it makes up for in practicality. Despite its coupe shape, the Q8 has a truly enormous boot, something that'll be important to many SUV buyers. One thing the Audi doesn't have, though, is that coveted Range Rover name. As we've seen from the success of the Evoque and the Velar, it's a badge that sells. And with its exquisite styling and great range of engines, not to mention its genuinely impressive off-road ability, this new sport looks set to be as popular as ever. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out a breathtaking convertible supercar from Maserati. Don't miss it.